Are you using JWT tokens in your client server architecture? You might want to reconsider that architectural choice. And in this video, I'm going to explain why exactly. So let's just compare like both approaches um, using JWTs for logging people in and using sessions for logging people in. And then let's see how they compare. And afterwards, we can come to a conclusion, right? So let's maybe start with the server side sessions. So if you have your website, you enter like your email, you enter your password, and then uh, your browser is going to make a request to the server. And your server is going to compare like the password hashes. And if those hashes match, then uh, you are creating a session with a specific session ID. And then uh, the server returns like a cookie with this session ID. And the cookie is HTTP only so that it cannot be read by any, read by any JavaScript, like not yours, and especially not third party JavaScript. Uh, and it should also be secure so that the cookie is never uh, transferred over like an insecure connection. So something that is not encrypted because otherwise it could be, someone could intercept the communication like with a man in the middle attack, right? So that's typically how this sessions like on the server uh, work. And if you do a follow up request, what's going to happen is your browser is going to automatically send this cookie along. Um, the server is going to have a look at the cookie, um, take a look at the uh, session or the session ID and then fish it out like of your session store. And then the server is doing whatever it is supposed to do, right? But for every follow up request, um, you basically need to fish this thing out of the session store. Yeah, so that's like one approach. And now some people say, ah, you know what? I don't want to maintain like this uh, store here. Why can't we make this thing stateless, right? And at the first glance, it looks quite interesting because what you just do is instead of um, like creating like a session in your session store, um, you check whether the password hashes match. And if they do match, you just create like a JSON web signature token. And this JSON web signature token is like signed with a secret that you keep secret. And uh, yeah, then if someone attempts to like modify the payload, you will know and the signature validation will fail. And then afterwards you can just return like the, this JSON web signature token. And I've seen like different approaches. So some people put it inside of a cookie, which frankly speaking is way better than just uh, returning it, uh, yeah, not in a cookie because if you do not return it in a cookie you have the problem that any javascript can access this token and that includes like third-party javascript uh, malicious cdn scripts uh, and also like some browser extensions although browser extensions can also access your uh, http only cookies but only if they explicitly declare them uh, in like before the user or before the developer uploads it so like there's just not that many attack windows with cookies, but we're going to get that. Uh, we're going to get that in a second. Okay. But the thing is, you do not have like this Reddit store here anymore. You just return this um, token here, uh, any cookie or not any cookie. Uh, and then you just send this thing along for every follow up request. So in case of a cookie, the cookie is sent automatically along as before. Uh, in case you return it like as plain text or like with a payload, you would probably put it inside of the authorization header. But as I said, like returning it in plain text or like not putting the token inside of a cookie is really, really dangerous. And we're going to get to that in a second. Yeah, so I made like a little table here. Um, it's not by any stretch of the imagination complete in terms of features, uh, but I think it highlights like the most important point. So let's just imagine the following scenario. like. So you're a bank, some customer calls you and says, hey, I think someone is kind of in my bank account and is doing weird things. Can you please kick that person out immediately? Can you please lock my account? Well, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time doing that with uh, JWT tokens uh, because they are stateless. So with server side sessions, well, you can just invalidate like the session with like one click and then you can lock like the user's account. But with JWT, uh, there's just no way on how you can do it unless you introduce state, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of having JWT tokens in the first place, right? Because now you have a blacklist or whatever other solution you might come up, 
or without logging everyone out, right? If you, if you change the uh, secret or like the private key with which you sign like the tokens, well, of course, then everyone is locked out, including that one person. But uh, that's like a huge usability issue. So logging someone out from the server side, not possible without either logging everyone out or without um, introducing state. Uh, you also don't know who's currently logged in, which is like very useful, right? To have like the history of what the person is doing. Also very critical in uh, banking applications. And um, yeah, that is like really something that is an absolute uh, must. Is also especially this uh, logging someone out from the server side. If you are working like for a bank or for any company that deals with money, like banks, insurances, or also like health data, anything that's critical, it's like an absolute must that you can log someone out on the server side. Like you're not going to pass the audit if you use JWT tokens for like authentication, uh, like for the browser to the server, right? Just wanted to mention. You're not going to pass it, like it will be flagged and well, you have to fix it. Uh, another thing is that bear in mind that that stuff here, um, the JSON Web Signature Token, it's just signed, but it's not encrypted. So that means everyone can read it. And while it does not really give you like an attack vector, it does expose some information, right? What roles you have, um, how IDs in your system look like, whether you have UUIDs, whether you have like uh, numbers um, for IDs, you might not want to expose uh, that stuff. And the fourth uh, reason uh, is also super critical. So actually these three things I would say are the most critical parts you cannot immediately immediately revoke privileges so let's say one guy he just logged in and he got like admin rights right and say the token is valid for like 10 minutes or so and um, now one minute after the guy logged in it's like oh we have to downgrade that, that guy um, for whatever reason uh, we don't want that person to have admin privileges anymore and if you think ah, that's not that common it kind of depends. So a lot of attacks, attacks that are happening or a lot of breaches happen internally. So there's actually a couple of employees uh, or, or insiders uh, that are like stealing data or doing, doing like weird things. So that happens like quite a lot. So it's extremely important to be able to revoke privileges from people immediately. And you cannot do that with JSON uh, web, with the JSON web token uh, based solution unless you introduce state or unless you log everyone out um, and these are like the main points i would say uh, the next point uh, i just wanted to briefly mention them although they are not that important like the red uh, points are important so both solutions are scalable um, but we do have to say that of course uh, a token-based approach is like good or like relatively easy to for gigantic scales so for like planet scale if you're like google facebook or whatever like then this is working really well. But like even the session based approach is like very, very scalable. Like you can scale up like vertically, you can make your server bigger, you can have uh, like your a database, your Redis running on a dedicated node, you can have a cluster of servers. So you can scale up like really, really well. And chances are that before you're going to run into scalability issues because of your session store, you're most probably going to run into scalability issues of your database because uh, it's an acid compliant database and it's just way, way slower uh, than like your session store, which is like probably not persistent and which is like significantly faster than like any uh, like SQL or NoSQL database. Yeah, uh, you need to maintain a session store. Uh, that's true. Um, you don't need to do that for JWG tokens, uh, but you do need to rotate the key also or the secret uh, from time to time. But yes, that's like the downside of downside. Uh, so to say, of sessions. Uh, your bandwidth consumption will be a little bit higher for JWT, uh, for the JWT based approach, simply because these tokens, they tend to get like bigger and you have like the signature, which you have to send along for every single follow up request. Whereas uh, if you just have the session cookie, it's like pretty small, right? It's just a session ID and that's it. And I also wanted to point out that the total amount of attack, ve uh, attack vectors is like, I think, higher for JWT tokens, simply because this is the more sophisticated solution. The more sophisticated something is, the more attack vectors like you have. 
And there's actually uh, like a draft here. Originally comes like from Microsoft. It's already expired, right? And this thing contains like best practices for JWT tokens. <laughs> and it's pretty remarkable how creative people get with attacking like the actual JWT implementation. So not like the signature algorithm itself, like not RSA or something, because that is extremely strong, like mathematically, but like the library that is implementing this, right? By trying like proto, by trying um, to downgrade like the signature algorithm by modifying the header, uh, by just sending tokens that do not have signatures, by trying like SQL injection. There's just so many ways on how you can attack these type of tokens. So having a session or using sessions is just easier to get right. Uh, JWTs are like more sophisticated and there's just more ways in, in which you can attack this entire thing. So sessions are like more battle tested. Um, and you know, you just have the session ID. There's just not that much room to attack. Whereas, whereas with JWD tokens, you have a lot of different claims and uh, that are defined like in the specification and it's just easier to attack some of them. Cool. Uh, moving on, uh, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Some people, uh, if they do use JWT tokens, they return the token and store it inside of local storage. That is very dangerous because third party JavaScript uh, or like JavaScript in general has access to your local storage. Uh, browser extensions like can have access, like in certain cases, uh, malicious CDN scripts um, can have access. And um, yeah, that's just, that's just a big problem. Uh, however, if you put it inside of a cookie, well, no JavaScript has access, like not even you uh, have access to it. So there's like, it's just harder to kind of write an exploit for that, right? And cookies are pretty battle tested. And one more thing I would like to mention is that when using all of this, you need to mitigate uh, CSRF attack vectors. And while that sounds like pretty sophisticated, uh, it's actually very simple. Um, there is this OWASP uh, cheat sheet over here. And uh, they just talk about like what CSRF is and how you can prevent it. And most of the time it's just installing like a library and writing three, four lines of code and then you're good. So if you follow like these basic principles, HTTP only cookie, uh, secu only transfer the cookie over secure connection and mitigate CSRF, you're like pretty good. Uh, whereas like with JWT tokens, there's just more ways now you can attack it. And uh, to close all of this, I would also highly encourage you to uh, read like two blog posts here. So they're like pretty famous and, and pretty popular. Um, there they also go into detail on why it does not really work and they also compare different solutions. And what I also like is uh, this flow chart over here, <laughs> which basically explains why specific approaches like blacklisting and that kind of stuff, why it doesn't really work, why it has like significant drawbacks and why you should not do it. So to sum up, uh, please use sessions, right? It's just a better approach. That is not to say that JWT tokens are useless. Uh, on the contrary, they're actually very good, uh, but mostly like for server to server communication or for one-time tokens uh, or for one-time access uh, tokens. So for that, they are really, really good. But just for a browser uh, logging into uh, some server uh, and you know for browser to server communication, it's just not a good fit. It just has too many downsides and you cannot do the four things that I just mentioned over here. So that's it very much. Uh, that's it. I would say uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any question, uh, please put a comment down below. You can also reach out to me on Twitter right away. So my Twitter handle is at production coder. And I've also put an email list in the description down below. So if you guys want to have a say in what we cover next on this channel, uh, you can sign up there and every once in a while, I'm going to send an email along. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.